Hello, Bridget. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing, Susie? Good. All right. Welcome to everybody that's joining us. We are back for our third Thursdays live at three, um, even though this is not a, a third Thursday. And Bridget, are you there? Gotcha. <laughs> Popped in and out a little bit. Um, so we're joined by Bridget Barnes, director of Boys Town, Nebraska's Common Sense Parenting. Welcome, Bridget. I can't hear you really well, Susie, so I hope you can hear me. I can hear you. Maybe I'll just talk a little bit louder. Okay. Better? Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so we're talking about back to school and back to school transitions, and um, there's a lot of talk about back to school right now. Obviously, current mm -hmm. situations um, make back to school this year a little bit different, and potentially a little bit more stressful um, for the whole family, not just not just kids, but mom and dad and uh, figuring out the environment that's gonna work best. Um, so what are some things that I can do now, a couple weeks before school is starting? Are you getting a little feedback? Uh, are you kind of going in and out? So Sorry. I, I think I heard you say, can you say that again for me? What are some things that I can do now to help make back to school a little bit less stressful for my kids? Mm. Well, I guess number one, admittedly there is gonna be some amount of stress. That's so kids are prepared for it. There's gonna be a stressful situation because school won't look like it used to look in some respects. Uh, so helping kids to understand that because understanding kind of reduces that stress and creates some of the normalcy by saying, okay, we're gonna have masks to wear, we're gonna to need to wash our hands and you know, use sanitizers, we're gonna to need to keep our distance from certain, you know, kids, uh, even though we like them, we might not be able to hug them. And if we know uh, we have a cold or something's going on, we're gonna to need to protect other people as well as ourselves in those situations. So kind of talking about the stressful situations that might occur in their classrooms, in their schools, in their daily lives, and helping them to create normalcy around that. And this is what we're faced with, and this is how we deal with that, and, and we can. And so um, having the kids be involved in uh, you know, making their masks, talking about the structure of the routine, what's gonna change, what's gonna be the same, what do we do about that? Having them be part of that conversation also will reduce that stress that they might feel but just having sometime during the day, maybe after school or in the morning, for them to talk about what happened to them or what they experienced, to put that someplace, to put that conversation somewhere and to share that with you. And it doesn't need to be long and drawn out, just, you know, it's pretty much, let's talk about your school day. What was the funnest thing that you experienced? What was the worst thing? What was something that was new that you, you experienced? And let them share that with you so that you can maybe troubleshoot that with them or solve that with them for the next day. You had some good ideas about masks and how to make masks a little bit more exciting for kids and uh, a little bit more normal. Why don't you share some of those with us? <laughs> okay. Well, number one, parents, you have to lead by example. So if you want your kids to wear a mask at school, you need to be wearing a mask, not just sometimes, but you know, if you're in the house, that's one thing. But when you guys go out showing them, I'm wearing a mask, I'm respecting other people's uh, social distance here and protecting them. But I try to make it fun. I try to, you know, bring the, you know, the fun. So uh, my husband and I, my, we, we have, uh, my husband has a Notre Dame mask. You know, he wears this around, boo. No, it's a, he wears this mask. So maybe you get something that represents your kid, whether it's a team or, or whatever. Um, maybe you can have it be matchy matching you know i have one like when i go and i work out and i'm walking i've got my cap i've got my mask i i'm cutie there i've got that going on there and if i if i'm you know i'm going to go out with the girls or something i've got a mask and oh i look nice today look at that I, i'm really cool uh so it, it can the key thing though regardless of how it looks uh, or, or is the comfort for kids. Kids don't like it when it's uncomfortable. They're more likely to take yes. it off if it's not comfortable. So really getting one that fits your kid's comfort. Now, whether that's around the ears, if they don't like around the ears, maybe it's gonna go all the way to the back. They have really a lot of different ones online that you can look at that 
won't cause their little ears to stick out and they won't be bothered by that. But really making sure it's snug around their face, but not too snug uh, and trying on a couple of different ones. So I, I have to be honest, I spent some money where I'm like, can't wear that one where I've doctored them up. Uh, but sometimes just making some homemade ones are, are really fun for the kids. Have you done that uh, since you have your kids made masks yeah. yet or, or been involved in that? Yeah, it was um, it was a pretty good failure, I would say, Bridget. Um, yeah, me they too. Did, they did not fit well. The third time we made them, it was it was much better. But yeah, the first few, and so it, it was fun, you know, going through that process and, and learning what we did wrong, and um, the kids thought it was pretty entertaining. So we actually we have all of our failed masks hanging up, just in case we are out of masks and need something to go with. <laughs> exactly, but that's the whole fun of it. Is you know, yes, I did waste a lot of material and cut up a lot of t-shirts, but yeah. I didn't want them anymore. But you know, so it was a fun thing, and it's something that kind of brings that realization that this is something we're doing. This is something that's part of our lives now, mm -hmm. and uh, we can uh, really have fun with it and make it ourselves. But comfort, make sure it's a good fit for the child, uh, and it maybe represents them. I have a mask that I wear when I work out because, you know, like these uh, paper ones, they're really bad. Uh, yeah. You know, they get all mushy <laughs> when I'm working that. So there's not, a, so there's certain ones that have. So I have a workout one. So try to make sure you're, you're cognizant of that. Um, you know, it's important that not, I've been noticing, and I don't know if you've seen, but I see when I'm at the store, I see little children and they have masks on, but they're so thin. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. You have to make sure that, you know, you use some kind of little filler, you know, the little pad that goes there so they, mm -hmm. you know, have some some coverage there. So make sure you do have layered or, or something that ha provides that filter. Because I have been noticing that when I've gone to the store more than once, that kids have a mask on, but it's really thin or it's a cutesy one, but it doesn't really protect uh, in right. any way. Right. Um, we yeah, I, I would say, you know, get the kids involved monitor when you're with them how they're wearing their mask just like when you tell them to put on their sweater before they go to school make sure they have their mask and an extra one in their backpack in case they lose it or something happens and you know also kind of talk about the consequences positive and negative for not wearing a mask you know if the teacher has to tell you to put that mask on and you argue back there's a consequence for that when you get home so you want to you know, follow those rules. Because sometimes they'll see other kids breaking the rule or something and they'll follow along, but they need to understand that you're going to hold them to that expectation. Yeah. And that's great to practice now because I know a big concern with a lot of um, parents I've seen online is, you know, you're not supposed to touch your face as I'm touching my face. Um, and with the masks, it adds this whole another layer of something to mess with and adjust and fix on your face and so you know the more practice they've got wearing them before they go into school the less they're going to be messing with them i think on their face yeah i think yeah now that we have something on our face we're more likely to touch our face our kids probably weren't more likely to touch their face because they had their hands on their little phones and things like that all the time Very true. but sometimes i you know i teach my kids like uh put your hands in your pocket while we're at the store you know, put your hands in your pocket or have something in your hand, whether it's your phone. And so I try to keep something in my hand so I'm more, less likely to touch my face. So they're going to have their books at school and things like that. And maybe just keeping something in your hand so you're less likely to touch your face. But you can make a little pack. And oh, gosh, I don't see my little bag around here. But I have a little bag that has my hand sanitizer in it, right? You know, so you can have your hand sanitizer. You have your extra mask that you're going to have. Um, you, you know, you might put tissue because for some reason when I'm wearing a mask, my nose runs a little bit more. I don't know what that is. Might be just me or whatever, but you know, have that. I also have gum so I can chew a little bit just to create, you know, moisture in my mouth because you have this mask over your face. And so sometimes air and that kind of thing. And you, people are talking about, you know, mask breath now. Oh, wow. Well. So, you know, a little gum. Uh, something a little too that and have that there, put a little drawstring back, have it your child in their backpack, it'd be a, it's a good thing for them to have around. Yeah, agreed. Uh, I also saw another fun uh, thing where they had all the teddy bears in a kid's room 
with masks on mm -hmm. just to again make it fun make it exciting mm -hmm. make it a little mm -hmm. bit more normal um let's see what about how can i lessen my child's fears when it comes to going back to school well i think the best thing we can do for kids is scare them out hear about you know, fears you know real or otherwise you know sometimes they make it bigger than it is going to be and sometimes it's very real and we have to accept that you're right this is going to be a scary time and what can what can i do to help you feel more comfortable what can we do and when you first get to school and you get out of the car what could you do in the first 30 seconds we could take a deep breath right we could take a deep breath and then blow it out okay and you know self-affirming at statements saying something like i can do this it's going to be okay maybe it would be the next step you know what if you're really feeling anxious something happens and you begin to feel anxious anxious you could talk to someone who would you talk to so just walking through that mm -hmm. with your child i think would alleviate some feelings of you know i don't know what's going to happen you know that's the fear we don't know right. what's going to happen and they don't know what's going to happen and so uh the younger the child i might be there for them you know i i'll be available to them i'll come whenever whenever you're feeling anxious um I used to take my son because he had special needs. I would take him early to school before any of the other kids mm -hmm. got there while teachers were still setting up their room. And mm -hmm. so I would make an appointment to go. And if you have a child who's really showing a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, not wanting to go to school, um, be respectful of that. And uh, maybe set an appointment and go and talk to the teacher and maybe yeah. that kid alleviates some of your fears. Yeah. Well, and I like your idea of talking through situations because that's then they've got something that's known. So if this happens, I can do this to help me feel better. If this happens, I can do this to help me feel better. I think that's, um, you know, with my own kids, something that I know will be significantly helpful. Mm -hmm. um, now, structure. So I think this year has a potential to really interrupt structure for kids. Uh, and we know that's important. So uh, what can I do at home to help limit that? I think I heard you a little bit. I, uh, uh, is this about uh, uh, helping children with structure yes. in the home? Yes. Okay. Since things kind of get out of whack because of things going on with COVID and, and so on and so forth. Well, definitely, if you already have a routine, stick to it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Stick to that routine and put that back in place. And, and right now, parents are trying to decide, okay, am I sending my child back to school or not? Are I homeschooling? And if they go back to school, how are they going? Is it the whole day, half, you know, depending on what school district you're in? And I would just say, number one, do like we've always done. You know, you get that back to school prep. You know, whether it's back to school shopping, you can do it online. Get your pencils, pens, papers, that kind of thing. Your child, you know, you pick that time and you go with your child online. You buy the things or whatever. And then, you know, maybe a couple of back to school clothes. Even if the child's not going back to school, they need to feel part of this has changed. I'm no longer in summer. I'm going back to school. Right. And this is what this feels like. This is what I'm used to. Creating that normalcy again for them and, and setting the tone. Now we're back to school. If you're going to see at home, uh, you definitely should have a little place that this is the school area. And if you've been doing that, that's good. You know, let's clean it up. Let's get it ready. This is serious. We're going back to school. If kids are going back to school, definitely, you know, going to that school walk for the first night, meeting teachers, knowing where everything's at. Uh, and, and like I said, do a walk through of what do I do when this happens? What if Johnny pulls down my mask? You know, what should I say and do? You know what, what you know i'm gonna put my mask back on i'm gonna wash my hands i'm gonna get some help yeah. okay you know a one two three for your kiddo uh, in case things should happen to them and how to address that great well we've got a couple of questions that came in um so one of them any any ideas on how to make sure my child is getting socializing opportunities wow that's a great question how can we make sure our kids are getting socialization in their lives and, you know, I would say, you know, as much as possible, know your kids' friends and know their parents and figure out schedules that you can collaborate on 
and what kind of social distancing activities that you could do. Uh, lots of them right now, while we have great weather outside, uh, we kids can be outside and be together, we still maintain social distancing. But knowing families, when you know someone and you know somebody's had a core, you know, you can trust because that trust factor is a big thing. So knowing that knowing that family versus somebody you don't know and you're just like, I'm going to go and spend time with so-and-so. And you're like, I don't really know them. <laughs> so get to know your kids' friends and get to interact with them in comfortable ways that are comfortable for your family and for theirs. And kind of talk that over and creating those play dates that maybe we usually didn't have to think about once they got past age five. But now you're going to have to think about a more kind of scheduled dates uh, with your kids and other people's children. I think that's great. Um, you know, it's it's going to be hard for parents whose kids are just starting school and they don't know anybody. So it's going to be important, mm -hmm. I think, to make that first step and, and send an email to the other parents and just make a connection so you can start that that conversation if you if you have a kindergartner. Um, another question yeah. we've got, do you have tips on how to teach my child to act on a Zoom call? How to act on a Zoom call? Yeah, so if they're doing online learning, you know, what are, um, I, I, I assume it's very similar to other behaviors on um, how can you set the expectations for how they should behave on a call, um, mm -hmm. especially with little ones that probably aren't used to it or that maybe did not do it at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, I think children learn best how I do it, right? So, you know, first we'll do a pretend, right? Where we'll actually pretend we're on a Zoom call. We look right here toward our teacher when she's talking. We, you know, uh, you know, nod our heads. You are kind of active listening. Uh, we maybe jot down notes while she's talking. If you're a little older kid or whatever, if you're a little kid, you're, you're paying attention. You're putting your little hands underneath your thigh <laughs> so that you can not be middling around, uh, that kind of thing, or touching your face. And so, you know, have some steps that they, they can do into a practice. Then I would set up a real Zoom, you know, with somebody else. So if you have Zoom, definitely schedule a Zoom and then we'll just do a pretend. Dad is gonna be your teacher. He's gonna, you know, and it can just be a family member and show him how you can sit up in your chair, okay? And we're gonna put the timer on and let's see if you can use your active listening for the next three minutes. And I continue to expand that. Okay, what if you get about out of your chair? What is the consequence that happens when you get up? Oh, I've got to do this. Or I have to earn something out of the job drawer. Or I'm going to end up in a timeout. Okay, well, let's talk about what can you do when you feel antsy and you want to get up? Okay, well, you can ask a question. You know, if you feel like, you know, I'm getting bored, always ask a question. That would be helpful and wait for your teacher uh, to call on you, whether you use your electronic hand or whether you use your arm own hand to notify her. So give kids some ways out to be able to figure out how to, you know, negotiate this whole online thing. It's very tiring, yes, to be on, you know, yeah. right here. There's no kids around me that I can entertain myself with. So it, it's difficult for children. So give them some things to do, whether it's a little rubber band, I'm feeling, you know, antsy, I just pop it, okay, and I'm, I'm back making notes, whatever. Uh, give them things to do so they can stay engaged. So if I'm a working parent and I'm trying to facilitate this all at home, you know, what are some ways I can monitor how my kid's doing, um, especially if they're doing online learning from home, um, without interrupting them or without really interrupting, you know, my work day? Tell me that wow. answer, Bridget. <laughs> there is the, if I find the answer to that, I just, you know, I'm thinking, wow, that'd be great. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I have a, a bad answer for this uh, other than to say, you don't want to be a, you know, a helicopter mom. So try to avoid too much of anything is a bad thing is my motto. So let's uh, have scheduled check-ins and you switch it up so kids don't know, oh, she's always gonna come back at this time. But you know, I have little scheduled check-ins on the kids so that I can make sure they're uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing. But at the same time, I teach kids how to monitor their own behavior and control their own behavior, how to use integrity by being honest. How did you do? Well, I kind of, you know, got off task, but I, I 
pop my little rubber band and I got back on task. So making them monitor themselves versus I have to monitor you, otherwise you're not gonna do what you're supposed to do. So I would think that if you're gonna keep kids at home and they're gonna do home uh, schooling, then um, have some scheduled check-ins with them that are quietly done that you peek in. If you notice that they're doing something that not supposed to be doing, I always have a little a jar with tokens in it. And when I see naughty behavior, oh, a little token, a little red token goes in there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I might off camera shake it and the kid is like, oh, okay, maybe I should get back on task. <laughs> and then, so that I don't have to interrupt with my, right. you know, what are you doing or anything like that. I just shake that little <laughs> jar. They see it in the bit and know that, okay, I need to get back on task. And if they do that, I might put a green one in there showing that they're back on task, they're engaging and raising their hands. So notice good behavior as well as naughty behavior. Try to make your presence, you know, kind of in the shadow. You're like the wallpaper, you're not interfering, but you're noting and your kid knows that you are in the area. And uh, I think the less is more in teaching children how to monitor themselves and keep themselves on task with your best bet. You can't watch every movement that they make and you shouldn't. You should teach them how to watch every movement that they make. Yeah. You know, I will say at the end of the year last year, going on walks over lunchtime um, was so great for our family because it was just a way to move and take a break and have some of those discussions in the middle of the day. Um, and it took us a couple of weeks to figure out how needed that was. But, mm -hmm. man, that was, um, I think, the best part of our routine. Yes, yeah, Susie, a study came out of Texas on resources that increase children's ability to, you know, stay on task mm -hmm. and do better in the classroom. So I totally agree. Having those uh, scheduled breaks uh, at lunch time and some movement, you can do whether you get just a squeezy ball where a kid squeezes that or lifts that or, you know, do, you know, gets up and stretches for a while. It's fine as long as they, you know, get those little breaks so they can be back on task and so their brains are focused. I right. think it's wonderful. Great job. So another question we've gotten. Um, our oldest is very involved in extracurriculars, a lot of which are not happening this fall. Um, do you have any tips mm -hmm. for helping kids cope with those changes? Yeah, I think that is a shame that our kids mm -hmm. aren't able to do the you know, extra perfect activity that they once could. And if you can find some other things that they're interested in and they could do those that maybe they hadn't considered, I would, you know, definitely uh, talk to them about what their interests are because I, you know, I would not know where to start. And so get kids involved with talking about what else are they interested in that could be something that they do in a small group or by themselves or that they can interact from a distance with people uh, since they won't be able to do that particular activity that they were doing. Yeah, I love that. Looking at it as an opportunity to do different things. Yeah. I have a teenage son that would say, different. no way, that's, that, that doesn't help at all. I want to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I know. It's hard I for know. Them. Well, if we, if we flatten this line, you know, and get things back, the sooner we can do that, the sooner we can get back to our lives, yeah. I think, you know, so we really have to invest. It's like an investment. I tell kids, it's like a bank investment. We're investing in the thing we want in the long run. So we're doing that investing now. It's not always easy. It's not always fun. But in the long run, you get what you want. So we're going to get back to that. Let's just make this investment now. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. A lot of great tips. I will definitely implement having a jar and different colored tokens. Um, I love that. It's easy and it's um, oh, quick. Yes. <laughs> maybe a Notre Dame mask, maybe not. <laughs> but your going out mask Don't was awesome. I love that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Bridget. I appreciate your advice. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Bye, guys.